But for example, this one I haven't even activated. But the reason I can't get them is because I want to get their miles. So by getting the credit card, I'm going to get maybe 30,000 miles from one, 50,000 miles from another, depending on the company. And there it goes, and that's how I get my free tickets. So by that time, I had enough tickets for the four of us to fly to New York for free. And then I had five nights at a Marriott that was two blocks away from here for free. And I was able, and then I stayed three additional days with my college roommate in over across the river in New Jersey. So I was able to save up a lot of money. So we rationalized. We we're gonna watch the play. We got into a little squabble because I don't want to pay four hundred fifty bucks. I'd rather go to Jersey Boys or or something like that. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot less than this. Or um, or maybe something else. I know when when Phantom came to San Francisco, we paid I think two fifty for that. They're very expensive, and it's all supply and demand. Uh, it's one of those things that you do. Capitalism, that's the whole purpose. When you go to a place like New York City, there are certain things that you must do. And this is one of them. So you, through advertisement in this area, if you have ADD, you're in heaven. You're like, you're everywhere. Like, what, what, everywhere. It's, there's something to see. There's so much to see. So much to do. It's unbelievable. Did you spend a lot of money? It's hard not to, isn't it? It is so hard not to. There's store after store after store that is just amazing. Did you go with your family or with the school? I do go with my Oh, so you had no rules. Good, good job. If you go with the school, they take you to New Jersey. But at nighttime, you know, you go, you're in New Jersey, you're warehouse, you can't get out. And I don't, I don't know if they do that on purpose, but you, if you're in New York, you have to stay there. And as young people, you're probably thinking, well, I can't afford it. Of course you can. Southwest Airlines has their sales all the time. And you can stay at... Um, at a, what do you call it, a youth hostel. Youth hostel are 30, 50 bucks, and you're, you're gonna be sharing a room with a bunch of other people, but who cares? That's what you, you're young, you, you wanna meet people anyway. And that's what it's all about. But this is one aspect. So let's see, who was the other person that I asked? All right, so was you, did you get another perspective, Beverly? Is there a different perspective that you see about capitalism from this picture? Um, I'm not really, it's just like all the advertising that there is, so when it's like, what's the and like, did you feel you wasted your money? You did? Who else went to New York? Who, I saw several hands. Oh, you went to New York, Lina? Did you feel like you... No. Somebody, I saw like three hands. Alice. Alice, so you, did you feel like you wasted your money? No. No. So I don't know. I, I don't think I wasted my money. So those are, it's one of those words that we don't want. It might seem like it's a waste of money. But it's an investment. <laughs> it's an investment. Because now that you have that bug, I'm sure you want to travel. And if you're just from Salinas, you like that little horse who had a little blinders. This is all you see. It's all you see. So if you don't have a world, and once you see like New York, whoa, it's like you want to travel everywhere because of that experience. So maybe people don't feel like it's a waste of time, but think about a city like New York. New York is going to invest millions of dollars every single year in advertising. Come to New York, come to New York. And those of us that like New York are gonna be lured by that attraction of everything that New York is. And we're gonna spend money. People don't go to New York, the, the economy dies. Its, it's whole foundation is based on tourism. And that's why people go. So they're spending that money, there's a lot of things to do. And when you're looking at that picture, it is just what the investment that goes on. You know, if you want to make money, you have to invest. So all those, co those companies that are around here, they're going to invest. They're going to pay somebody, whether it's their chamber of commerce, so that they can in turn advertise. And then when people come in and stay, spend a night at their hotels, they're going to make tons of cash. May I ask um, if you had <clears throat> food at restaurants or on the street? Um, I would say kind of both. Why? It is super expensive, isn't it? Super expensive, so you have to know what you're going to eat. But uh, do you guys have like the Turkish food? Turkish, Turkish food is like burritos, like Mexican food. It's very, very good and inexpensive. So you can survive if you know where to look. Um, it, you, it's very doable. And most of the times, you, you have a limited amount of cash. So if you go to New York, you have to, how are you going to spend this money? This summer, I spent my summer at NYU studying. And when I was at NYU, I, I made it to three Yankee games. And Yankee games are really hard to get into, but I befriended the scalpers. I befriended the scalpers, and I got to see three Yankee games three nights in a row. 
for $20, $20 a pop. And I was so fortunate, I even have a foul ball. All right, I have a foul ball. I can be British if you don't believe me. It was amazing. That was amazing. Um, I won't tell you anymore. Because no. I, I, I want to know more. Did you get it signed? Or? No, because it's, I, I got the foul ball. And, you know, the ball's coming in like, whoa. Who was it hit by? By um, Andrews. The short, uh, what's his name? The shortstop for the Rangers. For the Rangers. Oh. Andrews oh. and, what's Elvis, his name? Elvis Andrews. There you go. That guy. So, so. you have a limited amount of money. You can't just go, go crazy. Like right now for spring break, I'm debating between Charleston, South Carolina, Nashville, Tennessee, and New Orleans. I haven't decided. Good New Orleans. I haven't decided. So if I go to New Orleans, I don't know if I'm going to take my little guy. <laughs> All right? So I, I have to figure it out. Um, I have free, play, the free tickets because of all the miles that I've accumulated. So I, I know that's not going to be the issue. And uh, right now when I call, I call about my car because somebody hit me. So I have this uh, horrible American car that I'm driving. But anyway, the, the car company that gave me this horrible American car, it's, it reeks of smoke. So some smokers in them, so I complain. I call and complain, and I'm going to try to get out five to seven days of a free car rental. So if I can get that, then I'm definitely going to go to probably to Charleston. <laughs> All right. So if that's as good as my ride, I have my, my air tickets, so now I just have to figure out on the hotels. And if I'm there and I don't worry about it, I'm going to stay something nice, eat Cajun food. So I'm already looking forward to that. I can't wait. But I can't look at, at that. I, you know, so it's, you have to figure out all these expenses. And as a city, you have to juggle. How much money do I have? Yes, sir. How do you get those miles? Of Eventually, I'm going to give you a whole lecture on that. Right. <laughs> so this is what you can do. The, the, the credit cards are, are going to start looking at you right now. If you get something in the mail from some credit card company that wants you to sign up for miles, keep them, and then when I tell you to bring them, then I'll tell you how that works. And I'm a master. I've been doing this for 20 years now. I'm a master. Okay? I got to go to Germany for free with a family one summer. And I'm saving my, my miles so I can go probably to Vietnam in two years. Maybe even next year. So there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of traveling. Uh, who saw something different that hasn't been, hasn't been talked about? Well, yes, but we, we, we did musical from your picture in, in here. If you notice, there's taxis. Yeah. If you notice, there's taxis. Did you take taxis in New York? You did? Why? Oh, you need to take the subway? It's five bucks. Oh, man. Did you take the, 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 the taxi? No. Good, smart man. Why not? Oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. I went on the Greyhound bus one year, too, so I'm crazy. Yeah, I went on the Greyhound bus one year. For 29 bucks, I couldn't pass it up. I was in college, I was young, so I got on the bus for 29 bucks, went to New York City. Uh, they don't have those sales anymore, though. But three days, though, three days, eating tortas every single day. I took my little bag and tortas. Uh. But, you know, you're young, you can do those kinds of things. But anyway, if you go to New York City, you don't want to take the, the, the sub, I'm sorry, the, the taxi, because it is really expensive. And once you know how to navigate around, you take the subway. You take the subway, and that's going to be way less expensive than that. And notice, too, how there are very few vehicles, mostly taxis. The reason you only see taxis is because if you drive into New York City, which you probably did and probably had to pay parking, how much was parking? It's like, um, very expensive. It depends on where you are. That's if you're around this area, you're going to spend 40, 50 bucks an hour. So it's very expensive. So you don't take a car unless you know that you have a, a special place for you to park it at. Okay? Questions on New York City? And now that I'm this New York guy, I, I, I would love to entertain your questions, but unless you have something, I can tell you because right now I'm itching. You can tell like you're a drug addict. Yes, sir. I think the thing that makes New York so so popular is because several um, successful industries and, and businesses are headquartered over there. And that's when and that's what makes it very high class, and people who crave the high class lifestyle. So I think that's what makes it very popular, makes such yeah. a famous tourist destination. But if you're not sure, if you're not careful as a person that works there, you can get sucked into that lifestyle. I had a job um, working there, and my buddy Grant and I, he was he was a bad influence because I was calling in sick almost every single day. Uh, I don't know if you guys know how to play darts, but I got into this dart craze. Why not? Dart, like, there's a, like, a darts, like really professional darts, it's awesome. So we go to all these different pubs and bars and different things and competitions, and I wasn't going into work to do all these things. So um, you can get in big trouble. So there is an allure. 
Yeah, there is an allure, but you have to have that discipline. And if you don't have the discipline, and the reason I really didn't care, I was living there for free. My college buddy, his, his, um, his neighbor was writing for Seinfeld. Do you guys know Seinfeld? Yeah. Yeah. He was writing for Seinfeld. So um, he, he, um, he got me a place. I was in Los Paris. It's like, a fancy um, name for, um, for a babysitter. I was a babysitter. I was a babysitter for a Hollywood actress and um, a Broadway actress. So she had a couple of uh, Oscars in her ma on her mantle. Her name is uh, Estelle Parsons. So I was babysitting for, uh, for free, um, and I got to live in the Upper West Side for free. So it didn't really matter to me. It, and those kind of gigs come because of the people I went to school with. I mean, I went to school with the Beastie Boys. Uh, do you guys know that show, Slap? That's going to come out Thursday or last night? Well, anyway, the guy's my buddy. So yeah. these are the kind of people I went to school with. So when you go to a school like San Jose State, maybe you're not going to see that. <laughs> you're not going to see that. But when you go to a private school, you're going to see all of these things. You guys know Diana Ross? Mm -hmm. yeah. I used to do laundry with her daughter. So I have a bunch of stories like that because of the school that I went to. And, it is, and that, that's why I have all these opportunities. One of my buddies, he's the president of, um, vice president of Google. He, he lives in New York City. If I quit my job, I have a job tomorrow. So connections are very important in capitalism. Networking is really important. Learn how to kiss butt. If you don't have a personality, buy one. <laughs> Figure it out. But that's how it's, it's money. It's money waiting to be made. All right. So, uh, no, I'm talking about traveling in, in New York City completely excites me. Uh, so I apologize. So now you guys can write. <laughs> no, no, I have your lecture. I'm sorry, I have to give you a lecture. I'm not even there yet. Boy. Yes. All right, so now give me the lecture. So 12 minutes, I promise. So you guys are going to have to go back to your seats unless you can, you can write where you're at. All right. So in understanding capitalism, you need to know that there is the, the theory and then there's the practice. This is the theory component. This is how it's supposed to work. In theory, the, this kind of triangle is more like an equilateral triangle, where it's all sides are equal, and you have the elite, the middle class, and the working class. Under this kind of a system, people are going to put themselves in the class that they're either born into, or depending on the kind of jobs that they have, they're going to come in this area. But, and if you don't like your class, you can always climb up the social ladder. What do you think is the representation of the social ladder? What's going to get you to climb up from one class to another? Education. So depending on your education, you're going to either, you're either going to stay where you're at or move forward. And even as a school, if you think about it, if you don't like school and you're a senior, you have the Opportunity Program, the PASS Program, Independent Studies, Montoro, Rancho Cielo. Is that all three? What's that, what's that packet program? Is it Puente? No, the one you can do a course like in the oh, day. Cal. 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 So there are all these different programs because they, the system wants you to get an education if you want to. Now, mind you that if you do some of these programs, you're not going to learn anything because you're trying to just get the, pat, the, 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 the credits and not learn anything. So overall, it looks really enticing. You choose where you want to be. However, if you make it to the middle class, once you're there, you have to work really hard to stay there because you have a certain lifestyle. And once you have that lifestyle, you can't take that day off. You have to work more and more and more, get your wife to work, kids to work, so you're able to maintain this life. Um, but it's way better than being down over here where you're working really hard, but you have nothing to show for. And when you're down here, it's because sometimes you made that choice. You hate school. You want to drop out of school. You don't want to take classes. Or maybe you are you you lost your job, you you uh, lost an arm, and you didn't you didn't get any money from the insurance. You're divorced. So, ladies, the moment you get divorced, you're automatically going to go down to a, a, a particular class because you're not going to have the guy there anymore. There are so many issues. The reality, though, looks more like this. The reality looks more like this, where 99% of the people are going to be down in the working class. The middle class is shrinking, as we already learned from this, that other slide. The elite control 1% of all the money. I'm sorry. Uh, the 1% of the population controls 43% of all the money in our nation. And notice the runs. 
Notice how the runs are further apart. The reason they're further apart is because it's becoming more difficult for the people to climb up into that social ladder. If you're going to college, which several of you guys are, let's say you go and take out a $150,000 loan for your four years for your BA. You're going to come out of college, 22, 23 years old, with almost $200,000 in debt. How are you going to pay it off? You're going to be a slave. You're going to be working for Starbucks, maybe a little bit more than minimum wage, having to pay that money off. It's, it's very difficult to make it. So unless you have a specific plan, and even so, let's say you want to be an engineer. If you're not a Chingon engineer, you're not going to have that kind of lifestyle that you want because it's, easy, it's cheaper to hire people from China or, 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 the, or India or Indonesia than it is to have an American engineer. So if you, if you only speak one language, you better wake up and learn five or six. You can't, be in, you can't just speak English anymore. You have, the world is changing as we will learn through globalization. You have to be able to expand because this is a reality that is happening. You heard the protests about the 99%. They were very vocal. So it's not something that people are making up. It's true. And look at your own parents. Look at what the, your, the things that you do. And this is, this is what, is, what is happening. Um, what, and what, why is this happening? It's happening because of all these concepts that are associated with capitalism. I'm not going to go through all of them because some of them we've already done. And others you're going to have to research on your own. I'll just give you four, maybe five. Starting with free trade. Free trade is where countries are going to trade with others because that's how you get products. On Wednesday we were talking about bananas. The reason we don't have bananas here in our country is because we can't grow them. They won't grow here. So we're going to trade with the people in Central America, whether it's Belize or Nicaragua or Panama. We're going to trade bananas. And in return, we're going to give them movies, Levi's, iPads. Who's the big winner here? We are, because we're, we're selling them expensive products, and they're giving us bananas for a buck thirty-nine on a, a two-pound two bag. So they don't have that. So sometimes trade is not going to be fair. Whenever you feel like you make a trade, you, there's never of equal value, but unfortunately, that's the way it works. Or number two, privatization. Privatization means when corporations are trying to make sure that everything that's public, like a public transportation, public libraries, public schools, public hospitals, that you pay for. And the way that will work in education would be as follows. <clears throat> teachers would get paid, like the really sucky teachers, maybe 20 bucks an hour. And maybe the really good teachers, $200,000 a year. So it's going to vary. You're gonna, it's going to be based on merit. And now let's say that you're absent. Say that you're absent and you want me to redo a lesson. I'm going to charge you $300. You forgot your book? Don't worry. I'm going to let, let you borrow one, but I'm going to charge you $50. Uh, you, you're a high school student, so you have to take the KC. Here's the deal. You have two time opportunities to pass the KC in four years. And if you can't pass it after two times, then I'm going to charge you $1,000 for a course and $500 for the test. You want help with, my, with homework after school? I'm going to charge you $300. Everything is for profit. And this is where corporations are going. Whether they're going to get our schools or busing, everything. Roads are going to be uh, privatized. And it's because people, somebody's going to make money. When you go to Mexico or some of these other countries, you've already seen it. Everything's privatized. And if people in our country are dumb, then we'll be able to do it. So the more that you guys are active in protest, then the, the least likelihood that these corporations are going to be able to deceive you in, as to what they want to do. And then you have laissez-faire. Qui ici pour français? Qu'est-ce que c'est uh, laissez-faire? You can do what you want. And you can do whatever you want. You were talking about no regulations earlier. And we talked about that. If the government is not, is not involved, then you can do whatever. And imagine for you, if your parents weren't around for you to do whatever, then you'd be in, in heaven. You might die soon, but you'll be in heaven. So the government, somehow, there's got to be some equilibrium to what degree you want the government involved. Or incentive, profit motive. All of you guys are, are motivated by money. Who wants to be a teacher? Why not? Why do you think nobody wants to be a teacher? Adrian, why doesn't anybody want to be a teacher? I believe people, people want to be, be a teacher so they won't have to deal with that could be one reason. Is there another one? It doesn't pay well. It doesn't pay well. 
It doesn't pay well, and you all know it. You all want to be rappers, and you want to be football players, you want to be in the NBA, you want to be Madonna, you want to be, you guys want to be all these different things. All right, you want to be all these different things. You don't want to be a teacher because it doesn't pay. And that is, if that's what's going to motivate you, then that's great. Because we're all looking for money. And like I said earlier, you have to be the best in whatever you do, making sure that the job isn't going to be eliminated with technology or with outsourcing. And then lastly, you have to take a risk. You have to take a risk, otherwise you're not going to be able to accomplish whatever it is that you want to do. Sometimes, there are some of you guys have evaded an AP class. Because if you want your GPA to be tainted, or you evaded, oh, Mr. Lopez is teaching a class. I don't know. He's a devil. I don't want to take that class. You <laughs> evade. A cl uh, so you don't, you're not willing to take risks. And then if you don't take risks, then how are you going to be competitive? How many of you guys have at least six AP classes under your belt? Perfect. So just one. So just you, Celeste, you'll be perfectly ready for college. Everybody else, you're going to struggle. Because you know the rigor. You have been challenged. And everybody else is not, it, it, like here in the school, is like, you, no, don't read. Let's watch the movie. Pobrecitos. <laughs> and you have to take these risks. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and only then will you know. Um, you don't know what to do with your, with your life after high school? Travel, like I said, travel. Go to Ethiopia. And just take your backpack and, and kind of sort of live and, and see so that you can get that motivation. Take that risk. Or if you want to make money, then you don't know how, buy a box of, of um, candy bars from Costco, sell it off, and oh my god, I made 15 bucks. And keep selling it until maybe you, you want to do t-shirts. Now you have $200. Go buy your t-shirts, get the decals, and I'll sell it for 15 bucks. Start small. Figure out what you want to do, but you take the risk. If you don't take risks, you're never going to be a winner. And if you think, oh, well, I don't want to fail, you've already lost. You have to have the mentality. Steve Jobs, um, all these other uh, millionaires, they have failed so many times. And if you think of baseball players, if they, get, if they hit the ball three times out of ten, that's great. And you probably think they're, they're, they're losers. No, you have to, be, that's how it works in, some, in, in sports and in your life. What will, you, what will you risk? Like what I tell my students that, that are either in um, EL or have some sort of a learning disability, whatever, what I tell them is, when you go to Safeway, is there a line that says, this is for the EL students? Um, aisle number, uh, or um, check stand number five is going to say up there, this is for the special ed students? Or when you're going to buy milk, oh, this milk is for the gay kids. Is that, is that how it works? It doesn't work like that. So you have to be take, take those risks so that when you're out there in the real world, you're ready for them. And make your money. Can I, can I respond to any of your questions? I said a lot. In these 12 minutes, what can I clarify? Or maybe you have a question, something up to that, that uh, you notice that you feel like, I need to know what that is. Yes, ma'am. Well, there are unions, but there are unions. There are unions, but if in capitalism, we don't want unions. Because think about, even with minimum wage, think about McDonald's. I can drop out of school today. Does anybody work at McDonald's? Okay, if I quit today at McDonald's, how long would it take for me to be trained to be able to do what you do. Three hours? Three hours. So as you guys get ready for your diploma, you want the diploma right now? Here you go. Go. Oh, it's free. This is the diploma of what is the value. The value of your diploma is like toilet paper. So when you're there and there's no more breaking case of emergency, do your business. <laughs> All right? Because it takes three hours, and this is coming from somebody that works there, that why would I pay you eight bucks or nine bucks an hour when you should be grateful for me to give you two dollars an hour? And with unions, you guys are half teachers. Are all your teachers dynamic? Do, are, are you, or are they like Lurch? You guys know Lurch? Da -da -da -da. You guys oh, know yeah. Lurch? Yeah, yeah. You guys don't know Lurch. So if you don't have teachers, you, you all have teachers that teach, and you have teachers that don't teach. The teachers that teach um, get paid the same amount of money as the teachers that don't teach. Do you think that makes me happy? No. No. Because I, I feel like I lose pounds every time I come to work. I lose 15 pounds, I can go home and eat chocolate. 
All right, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not worrying about getting fat. So with no unions, if we eliminated unions, then I don't have to pay everybody the same rate. Then we're going to pay people that deserve it a little bit more than others. That's just in teaching. But there's also exploitation. All right, so there's always a, a different sense of the story. So everything that we're going to be looking at deals with money one way or another. Because if we don't have a whole lot of time, um, I'm going to ask you to think quick on your feet. Okay, because you guys, you guys were going to supposed to write, but there's no time. Where you guys are thinking about what are three things you like about capitalism, and what are two things that you like. So I'll give you a minute to think, and then I'll ask you a question. You can think, talk. So, so if you haven't talked, I'm coming to you. Three things that we like about capitalism. Three things that we like about capitalism. Huh? I haven't talked. Help me out, man. Three things you like. What do you like? What do you like? Oh, I'm trying to figure out. Come on. What do you like about capitalism? There's nothing to like about it. I know. Um, for don't like the greed involved, the manipulation. The what if I just quickly like, don't like anything about it? I don't like anything about it because so you don't support it. Yeah, that part doesn't mean like that. Top three, which I'm yeah, top three. He's probably gonna pick on you. I know. First, I know. Okay, so your minute is up. Uh, so Thomas, what is one thing that you like about capitalism and why? One thing I like about capitalism is competition it because it gives great. you motive to get where you want to go. And as a, as a pitcher or athlete, if, 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 is there somebody that wants your job? Yes. That wants your position, so that keeps you sharp, right? Yeah. You don't want to give up your starting, your starting job. Keeps you motivated to get better. That's right. And Davina, what is something that you don't like about capitalism? Um, I don't like how they are able to take control. Like, they have, like, the... Who's they? Mm. Corporations. The corporations. Like, like the companies Company. that do the most and, like, sell the most. Like, how they have, like, the bigger hand, like... In save, like in things that they can do and what they can't do. Like, why? Why don't you like that? Because they're taking control of you. Like, taking advantage. Like, they know we're not gonna do anything about it. So. What What are you wearing? What are you wearing? Are those Uds? Yeah. Why'd you buy them? Because I like them. They're taking control of you. Well. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, you made the choice. Yeah. You made the choice. So then, so a lot of times we complain the corporation. But oftentimes we are we can, we have the choice. We control the purse. And if you make a decision with all the corporations, if you don't like McDonald's because you think it's evil, is is um, tearing down the, the forest, then don't go to any hamburger joint because they're all involved in tearing down the forest and polluting them. Because you know cows they poop and they poop a lot and they goes in the river. So all the rivers are being polluted so they can have your uh, 99 cent burgers. So you make that, that choice. And uh, there's somebody else that hasn't spoken. Oh, that's right. So either you choose one thing you like or one thing you don't like. One thing I don't like is the unions because if you're like the top, then you shouldn't be treated like as someone that's on the bottom. You should be like treated with more respect and higher. Like you should be paid more than someone who's lower than you. You're gonna be a welder, you said. Okay. You'll be. You're, you're, let's say you're gonna be a welder. Right. And r right now, because welders have unions, they get paid, let's say, 25 bucks an hour. So we're going to go with your advice. So we're, you're, you're, on May 27th, 28th, you're going to graduate. We're going to eliminate unions on May 28th. So when you come into your job as a welder, we're going to be paying you 9 bucks an hour, and you'll like it. Well, I mean, I'm not. 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 I'm so we're going to bring down the prices. So we're going to get rid of all the unions for the welders, and then it's going to make it better for us consumers to get us expensive prices. And then if somebody, and if you get fired, you have no say-so. 